Greetings, Desire the Great One himself, Cynical Libertarian Society, CYNLIBSOC.com on the internet. I just finished recording Stating the Obvious 176, which came out two days before this will come out. And as always, when I wrap up an episode, I always sit there and think about, well, what could I have said, should I have said, what would I have done differently, yada, yada, yada. And, of course, I thought about the paying taxes thing. And I often talk about, you know, supporting the government actively as opposed to passively. And I often, often refer to myself as a prisoner while referring to other people, those of you who are statists, referring to you as slaves. So I was sitting here working on the show notes and it occurred to me, I just want to explain this again briefly, in so much as I do anything briefly. For anybody who's stumbled on the show for the first time and is new and hasn't heard this. Here in the United States, we are all affected by the state. We, You can't help but be affected by the state, right? If you... Yeah, I can sit here and make arguments all day long about how you shouldn't need permission from the government to drive a car down the road, but you still have to go get a license. right? I can talk about all I want about how homosexuals should not need permission from the government to get married, but they still have to go ask permission and get a marriage license, and they want it. And that's a critical difference between the anarcho-capitalist and the statist. And I want to really clarify what that looks like and how that works. So for example, paying income taxes. There are people who pay income taxes and they believe that they're paying these taxes and they're getting things in return. That paying income tax is a great thing because wow, look at all the wonderful benefits I get in return for my taxes. And then there are people like me and CAPS who pay income taxes because we know that if we don't pay income taxes, the government will come for us and take what we have or put us into a cage. And if we resist, we will be killed. There are people who vote and believe they're doing a good thing. They go out and they vote for a politician. They voted for Obama or they voted for Romney or they vote for whoever and they think, yes, through this, I'm going to participate in the democratic process and I'm going to change things. And I'm, I fall in the category that, you know, some people say, well, you can vote defensively. Like the, the you know, it's, this is the whole voting for the lesser of two evils argument, which I can't, I can't buy it. I've bought it in the past and I've finally reached the point I have to reject that idea. At least when it comes to people. So, so but for example, if you voted for either Romney or Obama because you thought that person was the lesser of two evils and you're saying, well, but this is defensive voting. And you know, I, I can't buy it. Because you know that you're voting for evil. You're voting for the lesser. Now, if you're voting for one of these people because you actually thought Obama or Romney or Ron Paul, any of them, if you, or, you know, this could be presidential election. We're talking about your local elections, too. Your mayor, your council members, what the fuck ever. If you're voting for any of these people because you think that they are the Messiah and they're going to change things and make the world better, then you're an idiot. If you're voting for one of these people because you think they're the lesser of the available evils, you're still an idiot because you're voting for evil and you know it. You're even worse in some ways than the person. You know, the person who voted for Romney because he thought Romney was the lesser evil is worse than the person who voted for Obama because he thought Obama is the Messiah. The only time I can get behind offensive voting is if you're voting on a ballot measure or a law or something like that. Like here in People's Republic of Fort Collins, 
after medical marijuana was made legal, this was way back, this isn't the recent legalization, which didn't really legalize marijuana. I talked about that a lot. I'll talk about that more. Because you can still get evicted from your rental apartment for smoking marijuana. You can still get fired from your job for smoking marijuana. So marijuana is, isn't really legal. It's only kind of sort of legal, right? It's like if we legalized homosexual marriage, but you could still get fired from your job for being married to another man, or if you could get thrown out of your apartment for being married to another man. Okay, so then is homosexual marriage really legal? Well, not really. Not at all. Not really at all. But so that's how marijuana is legal in the state of Colorado. And of course, like getting married, you have to get a license from the government. So you still need permission. You don't have to get, get a license to smoke marijuana, but if you want to sell it, you have to get a license. You have to get permission. All right, anyway, I'm digressing like I always do. So when marijuana was made, medical marijuana was made legal some odd years ago, there, so medical marijuana dispensaries popped up around the People's Republic of Fort Collins. And then, of course, a ballot measure appeared on the people's, on the, a ballot measure appeared here in Fort Collins on the ballot, thanks to the Puritans, to ban medical marijuana dispensaries in the Fort Collins city limits. I degraded myself by voting against that. And I called it defensive voting. So, Defensive voting, when you're voting on something like that, I can live with. And of course, by the way, in case you're wondering, it, the ballot measure passed, and so medical marijuana dispensaries were banned inside the city limits of Fort Collins. And so all these people who put all this time and effort into starting these businesses were now put out of business. Hey, you know, we really love that economy. We're trying to create jobs. And the people who have medical marijuana cards and does medical marijuana cards get abused and do people have them who don't really need them yes of course they fucking do but some people legitimately needed the shit but you know fuck them fuck those unhealthy people you know we just piss on them right who was it romney i can't remember it was some republican was it romney or was it somebody else who like told the guy in the wheelchair who was on medical marijuana that he's like, yeah, I don't want you to have medical marijuana or whatever. I know it was a big deal for a while there. But anyhow, I mean, so you know, there you go. People's Republic of Fort Collins. We're all woo, 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 tree hugging, liberal, hippie, Democrat town. And we ban medical marijuana because, you know, fuck creating jobs. Fuck the people who put all this work into starting these businesses. And fuck those sick people because we care so much about others. Anyhow, so defensive voting like that, I can I can live with. You're, when you're trying to stop, the in, an, in a situation like that where you've got the chance to not vote for some particular asshole, evil, piece of shit politician, but where you're voting for or against some specific law, right, I can live with that. So here's what it all comes down to, is you can be what I call a prisoner or a slave. You can actively support the government or, and when I say actively support, you can be actively supporting of the government and what's, what am I looking for here? You can, you can willingly obey the government. That's the phrase I'm looking for. I think that's the key, is willing obedience to the government versus putting forth the minimal amount of obedience necessary to stay alive. So the first person, the person who willingly obeys the government, the person who glorifies the state, you know, the person who willingly spends money on the products the corporation makes and who willingly sends their children to public schools because they think public schools are wonderful and willingly obeys all of the laws and gets their licensings and doesn't do anything without permission of the government and turns in other people for not obeying the government. That person is a slave. The person who you know, pays their income tax because they have to and gets a driver's license because he has to and gets a business license because she has to but who doesn't willingly who, who doesn't actively 
seek out government regulations to obey. And the people who homeschool their children, God bless them, even though there is no such thing as God. If God existed, I would ask God to bless them. Of course, why God would give a shit what I want, I don't know. It always baffles me about religious people. I prayed to God for such and such. Why does God give a shit what you want? I mean, who the fuck are you? Anyway, those people are prisoners. And here, I will explain the difference the way I usually like to do it with an analogy, which of course involves one of my favorite topics because it pisses people off every time I talk about it, especially the feminist statist, rape. Here's the difference between a statist, also known as a slave, and an ANCAP, also known as a prisoner. If you're an ANCAP, if you're a prisoner, and you're walking down the street, and you walk past an alley, and you see a man, and he's got a woman down on the ground, and he's raping her, and then another man comes up behind you and puts a gun to your head, and shoves you in the alley and pushes you down over there and says, okay, you are going to hold this woman down while she gets raped. And if you don't, I'm going to kill you and I'm going to kill her. If you hold her down while my partner rapes her, then we'll switch places. He'll hold the gun to your head. I'll rape her and then we'll let both of you live. Okay, so in that circumstance, I would probably have to hold the woman, and let's assume that these guys are really big and I don't think I have a chance in hell of kicking their asses. I might hold the woman down and hope like hell that when they're finished they really don't kill us. That's an ANCAP. That's how an ANCAP responds to the violence of the state. You do it because your alternative is death. And you might die anyway, even if you do it. We know that. I mean, I paid my taxes. The government might come and kill me anyway. There's no guarantee I'm going to be alive tomorrow. None. And I recognize this. I'm a prisoner. Now, here's the statist perspective. Here's the perspective of those of you who are slaves. You're walking down the alley. You're walking down the street. And you look down the alley. And you see the man raping the woman. And you see another guy coming up behind you with a gun and you turn around and go, hey, wow, man, that's great. You're raping her. Can I help? And then you run down the alley and you jump down on your knees and you hold the woman down and as she struggles, you smack her in the face with your fist and you say, shut up, bitch. Let this man rape you. What the fuck is wrong with you? You need to enjoy being raped. You should think about how lucky you are to be raped by this man in an alley. So shut up, you fucking bitch. And then you hit her again and then you hold her down by her throat, choking her while the two men take turns raping her. When you vote for Obama, a man who murders people in foreign countries with flying robots. That's what you're doing. You are going out of your way to say to everyone around you, I support the murder of other people in foreign countries with flying robots. When you go out of your way to vote when you go out of your way to make sure you're obeying the regulations, when you, when you participate in this, if you see something, say something shit, when you talk about how great the government is and how without the government, who would build the roads and who would educate the children, and when you fucking send your children to public school, you're holding that woman down by your own choice while other people rape her 